Hey guys, this is a uh, review and long play through to completion. Yes, I finally completed it of Burning Rubber, the uh, the game that came with all the uh, GX4000 consoles as the packing title and also the Plus Machine. So this is the first thing you would have booted up if you bought a Plus or a GX4000 Amstrad console back in the day, or even today on it if you bought it from eBay. And this game was designed to uh, show off what the GX4000 could do and got a very cool title screen here with some nice effects on the go there and basically guys just very quickly if you don't know the difference between uh, a CPC Plus or a GX4000 console compared to the normal Amstrad CPC range basically they were updated um, versions of the original CPC range nothing much had changed apart from a few additional things the main thing being um, an increased palette of colours uh, to choose from and number of colours you can display on the screen. You can choose from over 4,096 colours. Um, you had hardware scrolling and hardware sprites available at last. And also um, what's been referred to as DMA music. Um, now there's um, basically there's three channels from the ASIC chip which is the new chip that was put in the uh, console and the plus machines that uh, sort of brought together a lot of different uh, new components of the hardware scrolling splice blah 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 and uh, there's three channels in the ASIC chip which allows a program to do little routines and processing away from the main uh, CPU, the Z80 uh, therefore it's handy for doing higher quality sound effects and music where it can talk directly to the AY sound chip which hasn't changed uh, rather than having to go through the uh, Z80 uh, CPU processor, so I think I think it can be used um, for other things as well. Um, but it's a bit of a common misconception that the DMA is some kind of special new sound chip. It's not. It's just three channels from the ASIC processor. It simply allows more complex sounds that perhaps takes up a lot more uh, bits that. Uh, without the DMA would chew up uh, CPU processing and just slow the game down horrendously and uh, it's possibly been used here for the tire screeching sounds uh, I'm not sure but definitely the palette has been used to like a, a fantastic uh, effect here which you'll see shortly and hardware sprites um, I think the car there um, is a hardware sprite um, but the rest of the game is pretty much based on an earlier ocean game for the CPC range called uh, WEC, WEC Le Mans um, it's basically that game with the liquor paint essentially and I think the uh, title screen there, the BNR the letters, I think they're hardware sprites with a bit of hardware scrolling of that tire in the background but anyway enough about sort of those features We've chosen our controls and off we go let's start this and then we've got to do a qualifying lap here It's basically just a short circular circuit here. And as you can see guys, the graphics look fantastic. Um, just look at the use of colours there. Now there's a really good sense of speed and slipstream behind course to boost your speed further. There's a screeching tyre noise. I'm not sure if that's a, a DMA uh, sound effect or not but they are in a stereo, so I pass this car to the right and it comes to the right speaker. Everything looks lovely, um, very smooth. Some fantastic scaling of sprites going on there as well for a, an 8-bit machine. But the main letdown is that car noise, that buzzing car engine noise. It really it drives me up the wall after playing this for, uh, for X amount of time. I think that could have been done a lot better. Now we just finished our first lap there and we have qualified for the fifth position. Now there isn't, um, it, it's, it's not a racing game where you sort of fight for positions anyway. Um, uh, basically all you're going to do is get, reach the checkpoints before the time runs out. So it doesn't matter if you finish first or tenth or whatever, positions are not counted at all. It's just basically see if you can last to the end. qualifying lap there is probably just to introduce you to the game now 
Now it's taken me God knows how many years to uh, actually complete this game. It is really difficult. Um, I don't know. I think I've come back to this once every few months, tried to do a long play and uh, failed. I had a bit of time this weekend and I uh, gave it a go and I finally did it. And basically guys, it, you can't crash a once in this game really, otherwise you'll just run out of time by the end. So it's incredibly difficult to complete. It's quite easy to get into and stuff. Now, oh, as you can see there, the uh, sky, the sky there is already sort of changing colour, and this game is sort of played out according to the manual over the course of 24 hours. So day turns to night. And you can see it's starting to get darker and darker already, and night turns to day again, and I think that's just absolutely fantastic. And it just really shows off what uh, the graphic uh, graphical capabilities of the new console, you know, was capable of. Unfortunately, sadly, uh, underused in uh, later games. Now, I'll talk a little bit more about the gameplay later, just to let you sort of soak all the. Uh, so cool what's going on here. Now from a viewer's point of view, if you're, if you're watching this video, um, it does look like there's a good sense of speed in the game. But to be honest, when you're playing it, it just feels a little bit laggy, and um, that will, and I'll come onto that again uh, a little bit later with the, with the controls. But this look, this does look a lot better than it plays, basically, which I'm, what I'm trying to get out. Ooh, so this guy there getting more darker. Now this game's from John O'Brien, a uh, programmer at Ocean Software. Of course he did WEC Le Mans, I mentioned earlier, and he also programmed Chase HQ, two of the best uh, driving games um, ever on the Amstrad. And this makes up a nice trio of them, sort of holy trinity racing games. Now to be honest guys, this plays a little bit slower and a, um, a little bit laggier than the other two, but looks absolutely fantastic. Really nice effects there, guys, with uh, smoke coming at your tyres. Uh, if you nudge your cars, then sparks fly off. And there's the one that they, they, they get a little bit of sparks there. There's also an absolutely fantastic crash se sequence where you go flipping and flying through the air and roll across the tarmac. Unfortunately, you won't get to see it in this video because if uh, if I had crashed that badly, I would have run out of time. But I did do another gameplay video of this on my uh, channel, so you can go and watch it to uh, see the spectacular crashes that can occur. But uh, yeah, some really nice scaling on the sprites there. Um, the tunnels there done very well, and uh, I like the billboards at the side there. Is all look, check that out. It's getting darker and darker. Red sky at night, shepherd's pipe. No, that's not the same. <laughs> all right, okay, we're coming up to complete our first lap. There's four sections per lap. Now, okay, on to sort of gameplay and how you beat this game. On this first uh, stage, you can basically fly around corners at full speed. Obviously just be careful of overtaking cars. And when you do see the uh, countdown signs of before a, before a corner, like there, there's three, two, one. You want to basically start turning or getting ready to turn right on the uh, second marker of the three. 
usually just release a little bit of acceleration, go into the cut, go into the bend, then sort of accelerate out like you would do in real life. The physics is pretty good in this game, and the collision detection is spot on. It's pixel perfect, and just a little bit generous as well. You can squeeze through from some really tight gaps. Now onto the second stage. I think the first bend you can sort of. Uh, blast around but I think this bend coming up here um, you need to re be reducing speed as you can see there I, I've gone down to about 120 ish miles per hour and I'm already sort of sliding off to the edge there perhaps should have turned in a lot earlier changing gears down doesn't really help that much if I'm honest with you but if you're really really stuck um, change down to 4th, decelerate, change back up to 5th and you get a lower revs and lower revs will give you a better grip coming out of the corner and bend and basically guys the best thing to do in this is memorise the biggest bends when they come as you can see we're on the second big bend of uh, stage 2 and this, there we go, right onto st stage 3 and we've got a tunnel here, but you can blast through this first tunnel at full speed, not a problem. But there's a, I think there's a big massive bend waiting for you very shortly, so you need to be decelerating now. In fact, really, bends, you want to be taking it less than 120 miles an hour. Sometimes they're shorter than others though, so you can sort of take a risk. It's hard remembering which are the uh, longest and tightest bends and which are shorter. Right, slow down as much as you can here, because I think there's a tunnel coming up shortly. I think it's just past here. I'm already forgetting the <laughs> bits of the game. Yeah, here's a tunnel. Here's, here's what I do here, guys. I go down into third gear, because you don't want to get stuck in that outer lane. Um, you can easily find yourself drifting into the wall and then basically you're stuck behind cars, you end up crashing and you get stuck on the uh, wall. So I reduce your speed to about 110, slip down into third gear and then running around the most, running around the apex of the bend, move into fourth, start accelerating out of it. And we've got another tunnel coming up here so be very careful gone into third gear and that limits you third gear to about 110 miles an hour tops there's two bends in this third tunnel so just watch out for those second and third tunnels because they're a bit of a killer in this game and also what if you do do not have a spectacular crash in the tunnel and um, because sometimes if you fly through the roof and um, the game actually crashes and you have to reset it's happened to me a few times but check this out guys uh, where it's now almost pitch black and it's we're into the nighttime world. Pretty much all you can see is the uh, the rear brake lights of the cars in front of you, and things get really tough, especially as you're coming over the top of bends and hills. But you don't want to take things too easy, though, because you will run out of time. And there we go, coming up to the end of our second lap. Now, okay, problems of the game. Now, everything about this game, first of all, um, you know, initially is fantastic. This could have been the uh, greatest ever 8-bit driving game of all time. It looks absolutely fantastic for an 8-bit driving game. I can't think of a driving game on any other machine, any other 8-bit machine that looks as good as this. And it looks really smooth, and it looks like it plays really smooth. Um, yeah, but there's a horrible lag on controls, guys. And, the, and that is the biggest killer of this game. Ooh, a bit lucky there. You can bounce off the tyres, but I wouldn't uh, <laughs> bet money and risk yourself trying to do that. You, can get, you sometimes find yourself getting around corners really quickly. But anyway, control lag. It's like it's like there's a second or two delay from when like you just you know you press left to turn left or right to turn right that your car actually starts responding to it, which is a real shame um, because it just feels terrible. Now you can get used to it, 
obviously I have in this long play. And you sort of uh, judge yourself sort of turning, uh, starting starting to move a little bit before when you when you would need to normally just to sort of like uh, judge the lag. So you know it ends up being playable but um, it's almost like steering a boat rather than actually steering the uh, Porsche you're driving here. And that's a big killer guys, it's a real shame because initially it's really off-putting and if, the, if this is of course the packing title and the first game you would have played on your uh, newly acquired GX4000 and uh, you know you wouldn't have been very impressed. I know I wasn't. I, th I thought my uh, I thought the crappy joypad that came with the GX4000 was broken when I was playing the game the first time. But like uh, the oh man, this D button, is, sorry, this D pad is uh, must be really broken or something because it's not responding to my controls. And I was like, uh, no, playing this on the keyboard, it's just the same. Which is a real shame because uh, WEC Le Mans, the game is uh, it was built on. On the original CPC, um, that plays fantastically. It's just uh, that game is in is only in four colours, so it looks a bit looks a bit crap actually. But plays a lot better than this, to be honest with you. However, there is a lot, lot more going on the screen. There's a lot more sort of sprites and cars and sort of crashes on the go. And of course, you've got all those beautiful colours and you know the palette being used. And look, we're just you know we're just coming out of the night time into the daytime, and the, everything changes colour beautifully. I think that's just so fantastic how they've done that. Yeah, in third gear into those tunnels, second and third tunnel. Things start getting quite tricky on this third lap. The further you progress, the more and more cars you come up against. The road gets far more congested, and uh, there's a lot more sort of accidents happening. And the cars drive a little bit more manically as well. Just check that out. Those three cars there just basically just <laughs> cut me up. Yeah, there's a few crashes going on there already, so you've got to watch out for them. So they'll suddenly start flying across the uh, road. So just like real driving, you need to be looking ahead and planning for potential problems and accidents. Wow, lots of lots of crashes on the go, and it gets really manic on the uh, final lap. There's four laps, of course. I don't know if I mentioned that. And of course don't be afraid to use your brake, it's better to slow right down than to have a, a really nasty crash and lose all those valuable seconds. And you, you want to be, for the first three laps, you want to be roughly completing each, uh, each uh, stage with about 20 seconds left on the clock at least, and you're sort of on par then because uh, this is the final lap and you've got to take it ever so uh, carefully which might mean taking things a lot slower and if you've got that sort of 20 second cushion it's going to give you a bit more time just to take it a little bit more easier and not pelt around with all this traffic around Ooh. see the collision detection is really generous there Do some really <laughs> funky maneuvers there. That was very lucky. Jeez. Of course, on this uh, first stage, oh damn it! But on this first stage, you can uh, go as fast as possible around the uh, bends here. There's not not any uh, really big nasty bends. So we hit the first checkpoint in the second stage. Uh, watch out for a couple of big bends later on here. Yeah, you, oof. you'll find uh, 
your enemy cars there, they start moving left and right across the road quite wildly. So be careful. Just about avoided an accident there. And watch out, they can bump you across the road as well, which could really knack at you. And they will, ex uh, the, there's plenty of cars waiting to overtake you as well. But you know what, despite its controller lag problems, I did find myself really enjoying this game and getting really into it. I think it takes a lot of practice. Um, that was lucky. It takes a lot of practice to get into and get used to sort of that control lag. Uh, you know, I think when I first got this game, I may have played it maybe three or four times before I got bored of it. Especially on like, the really, really tight bends, I always just ended up flying off, crashing spectacularly. And I think once you crack how to take those really, really tight bends and long bends, uh, the game gets a lot easier. It's also important to uh, rework the controls on this as well. I use a fire button for accelerating, fire button 2 for braking, left and right of course as usual, uh, but up and down for changing gears. Now you can do it with automatic gears. Um, but there are moments when you desperately need to hit that third gear, like on those tight, tight bends in the uh, last two tunnels. But of course, it isn't possible with automatic gears. You just rely on your car braking, and braking is quite slow as well. I mean, it takes some time for your brakes to really take effect. I mean, we are driving at speeds in excess of 200 miles per hour. But once you get used to the game, guys, uh, I find it really quite enjoy. I did find it quite enjoyable, actually. I'm just glad at last I finally completed this. Anyway, we're getting very close to the end now. Can't remember. Is this the final uh, final stage? There's a lot of traffic on the road here. Third gear, of course. There's two bends in this tunnel. I'm really glad they put tunnels in the game, though. It's very, very nicely done. <laughs> wow, the road's getting absolutely manic out there now. Crashes all over the place happening. This could be the last big bend, I think, actually. Whoa! Wow, I was quite lucky there. Bounced twice off the uh, tyres and avoided those uh, that pile up there. I think this is it. Five seconds to spare. Four, three, two. One. I've done it. <laughs> See what, guys? I didn't crash once there. Well, I think I had a slight uh, minor crash, but I did it with zero seconds to spare, milliseconds. What a tough game. There you go, 16 stages in all, 4 laps, and that's burning rubber done. Bit of a sort of end game screen coming up shortly. Some special music, so I'll let you enjoy that, and then I'll sort of sum up a review, I suppose.
go guys. A nice a nice end game screen with some nice music. I don't know, I would have liked some nice sort of I don't know, animation, like you know, crowds cheering and uh, being presented with a gold cup or something like that, that would have been nice, but uh, hey, it's better than nothing. So there you go. The presentation all around is absolutely fantastic. Um, music's brilliant as well. Graphics and sprites, uh, 10 out of 10, you know, first rate. Um, driving game is an interesting game, you know, to pack in with the console, and I think they've... Uh, They've got a decent driving game here. Uh, just the big, big nasty negative is the laggy controls, which stop it from being another classic, you know, and probably the best 8-bit racing game around, which is a real shame. But you know, you can always go and play WC Le Mans or uh, Chase HQ. Yeah, here's the high score table of music. A note, I'm only in fifth there. What's that score there? Is that, is that one one billion? <laughs> I'm nowhere gonna get nowhere near that top score, which is bizarre. But yeah, sort of summing up for review. Real shame uh, about uh, that big negative, but everything else is absolutely fantastic. Whether you've been <sighs> Imp really impressed with this as your first game you would have played on the console. I'm not sure. Down to the, I think it's down to the individual. I really like this, and especially if you if you do persevere with it and get used to sort of uh, you know steering a second or two before you need to. <laughs> it's actually quite enjoyable. Yeah, 10 million points. I only got. Three and a half million there. I'm not sure how you managed to get a high score <laughs> that high. But yeah, do you know what? I'm still gonna give this game a pretty high mark. I'm not sure whether most of you agree, but I'm gonna give this a 9 out of 10. But just, it's just scraping a 9 out of 10. It's really probably more than 8.5 out of 10. But I'm just kind of wowed by the uh, the changing colour palette of like moving from uh, day to night and back again. That's really impressive. I don't remember many games, driving games that do that. Oh, and you know what? I forgot to mention something quite important. If you're driving behind um, another car, so I was say I was directly behind that green car there or whatever. Um, you act the, yeah, the game actually has slipstreams, so if you're in the uh, car in front slipstream, you can actually achieve a higher speed, which is so cool. Um, I can't think of any other 8-bit racing game where that's a feature. If uh, anyone, any of you can point out one that does have slipstreams in, I'm not talking about PC or Amiga or 16-bit games and 8-bit game, then let me know, I'll be interested to know that. Um, so that's a bit of a first for an 8-bit driving game, I think. So that's a really cool feature I forgot to mention. That will give you just extra boost of speed and give you those extra valuable uh, seconds and milliseconds to get through the game. But well done to Ocean, well done to John O'Brien the programmer. Uh, I really enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed watching this. It's taken me this long to complete this sodding game. Um, so I'm really happy with myself. So thanks for watching guys and see you next time. Cheers, bye.